Welcome into this segment of Behind the Pen presented by MostValuablePodcast.com. If you want to listen to the full podcast, go to blogtalkradio.com backslash Podcast. Also, we're on iTunes, so check us out there as well. Thank you all for listening as always, and enjoy the show. I'm going to switch gears here from one sport to another. and Let's talk about Major League Baseball news, guys, because yes, Major League Baseball conversation. It's been a while here on Behind the Pen. If you're still listening on Blog Talk Radio, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you're on YouTube, what's up, Yankees fans? I'm talking to you. If you drop a comment down below and even a like, that'd really help out our channel. Really do appreciate you listening. I'm talking New York Yankees today because I just, I, I feel like it. I feel like it. I think they're a very intriguing team and they had a kind of a sneaky offseason this year. Even going back to the trade deadline last year, I think they're in a very good spot and they could be good sooner rather than later. May take a year, but this is the year for the Yankees, in my opinion, to evaluate, 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 and just surprise us because they have so much going on with this team. So I'm going to talk about it. Really, yeah. And let's begin. Really, what they got in Andrew Miller and Aroles Chapman last season was so huge. They were able to revitalize their farm system, very similar to what the White Sox did this offseason in a couple moves. I mean, the Yankees acquired the 15th and 17th ranked prospects, according to MajorLeagueBaseball.com, in two moves. Clint Frazier, Gliber Torres. Really awesome job for the New York Yankees, and those two players alone are the spotlight of the future thus far. And they already have Major League Ready guys who are super exciting for the future of this franchise, specifically Gary Sanchez. What a beast last season. Hitting home runs every other at bat. It was just incredible what he was able to do. So that happened last trade deadline, right, in 2016, and the Yankees really weren't projected to compete in 2016 by a lot. I mean, unless you're a super big Yankees fan and anything could happen, I mean, I think realistic expectations for 2016 was, meh, well, what are we going to do? We'll see what happens. And they showed that they are close to being competitive after trading Chapman to the Cubs, getting Gleyber Torres, the 17th ranked overall prospect in Major League Baseball. What the hell? That's your future shortstop right there. And even they could play around with him, move him to second or, sh- or third, excuse me. Honestly, he's projected to be a shortstop. Don't mess with that. He's super talented there. And I think the Yankees know that. But right now, they're looking at Didi Gregorius, and that'll work. That'll work. But after trading Chapman, right, and you get all this value, even Billy McKinney as well, you get him back. They were able to sign Chapman. And I think that was the plan all around because they're like, who else is going to invest? All this money into a closer. I mean, we we know Chapman's value as a closer. Look what he did in the in the World Series and in the playoffs as a whole. It was incredible. But I mean, the Marlins were up against the Yankees. Like, come here, come here. We'll give you a million dollars more if you come to Miami instead of New York. Chapman's like, ah, see ya. Five years, eighty six million dollars to resign with the Yankees, and they got him. That back end of the bullpen is still dangerous. I mean the. The bullpen is, is going to be a question. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But you still have Patances for a while. You still have, And now you have Rollins Chapman for a while. So the Yankees could be good by the time maybe Patances' contract is coming to a conclusion. Maybe in the last year of his contract, they're going to be really good. Scary kind of good. And then you'll look at Rollins Chapman, and he's going to be there for a while. Obviously, hopefully his arm doesn't fall off. But that's something you're excited about as a Yankees fan. Is, okay. What's a formula to win in Major League Baseball and in the playoffs? Solidify the back end of the bullpen. Brought in Tyler Clippard. Kind of a savvy move. You know, I'm not going to really grouch about it because there could be worse options. We'll see what they get from Tyler Clippard. But I'll talk about the bullpen in a second because I just got myself all worked up. First, I want to mention what they did this offseason because I kind of rattled off going back to that whole deal in the trade deadline. They signed Matt Holiday, and again... Savvy move. Nice. Going to be 37. He can fill in at DH. They're going to have to replace Mark Teixeira. Teixeira retired. And A-Rod. A-Rod's gone as well. So Teixeira gone. A-Rod gone. Chase Headley's still at third. And you got Greg Bird, right, at first base. Now, Bird unfortunately missed all of 2016 with a shoulder injury. But he looks encouraged. And I think a lot of the Yankees are excited to have Greg Bird as their first baseman going into the 2017 season. He's going to be 26, hit 11 home runs and 157 at-bats in the big leagues. So we'll see what happens. I mean, young power lefty, you're going to do it. Go for it. Right now, this is the year to evaluate what you got, and I, they're, they're excited about Greg Bird. So many young guys. Aaron Hicks, Rob uh, Schneider, 
Aaron Judge, first round pick in 2013. Uh, it's it's a, an evaluation period. I'm going to keep saying evaluation season, and that's what's going to happen. Right now, I'm looking at the depth chart, and I see Gardner, Ellsbury, Judge across the outfield. And of course, you got Aaron Hicks mixed in there as well. He's going to have to prove that he can hit major league pitching. That's kind of a question mark. But you're looking ahead, right, as, if you're the Yankees. You have a Gary Sanchez who's money behind the plate and at the dish when he's hitting, dropping bombs over and over again. Gregorius you know what? He wasn't terrible for you, right? I think Yankees fans could be okay with the production they got from Gregorius. And Castro, meh, he is what he is. What are you going to do about Starling Castro? He is what he is. He had a scorching hot start to his Yankees career. Kind of went back to his career average. So can't really complain about Castro as much as you want to. You shouldn't because it could be much worse. But that outfield, it's a question mark. Maybe it's time to trade Brett Gardner. I don't know. I've never really been a big fan of Brett Gardner. He's got value in his own right. I know he does some things well, but meh, meh. Jacoby Ellsbury kind of took a dump last season, huh, guys? I mean, not really much to boast about uh, for a guy who's making as much as Ellsbury is. He hit 263 with an OPS of 703, nine homers, 56 RBI. What do you? Get? I mean, eh, you want you want more, but you got to take it because you have no other choice. At this point, you're stuck with them for a while. And I look at this team, and they're so full of young guys, just guys, that are going to find their way into the lineup. And I know Chase Headley is bad at third, and I am not. I don't assume Headley's going to be there at third all season long. If he is, I would absolutely be astounded because this Yankees team has just too many young guys to just let them watch Chase Headley bat 230. The problem, though, and this is what's going to restrict them, from being legitimate competitors in the American League. They could surprise a lot of people. Who knows? The current state of the Major League Baseball, I guess, aura, we'll call it, is young players taking over the game, and it's crazy. All of a sudden, teams who are terrible, like the Cubs and the Astros, I know it's not all of a sudden because it takes time to develop, but when you have those guys ready, suddenly they're powerhouses in dominating fashion. And that's what the Yankees are on their way to. Plus, they're the freaking Yankees. And when it comes to 2019, they could throw like $250 million to Manny Machado and say, come on, play for us, the evil empire. And they'll, they'll get him. And they'll say, okay, cool, awesome. Let's win 10 more World Series, make it 37. Unreal. But the problem I see with the Yankees and what may restrict them to compete in the American League this year is questions in their starting rotation. I mean, they run eight deep. The bottom three are guys. They're just guys. Who's going to emerge? And their bullpen. I don't know what they're going to get from their bullpen, to be honest with you. You got Patances, Chapman, Clippard's a question mark, struggle, struggle a little bit. Tommy Lane, lefty, you're going to have two besides Chapman, in my opinion, that you could rely on. Another guy as well is Richard Blyer. I mean, he came in 23 innings as a lefty, looked really good. So he's a young guy. They're probably going to rely on him in the bullpen this season. So you got a couple pieces. Other than that, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got in 2017 there, New York Yankees, because you won 84 games last year, and I couldn't believe it. They shouldn't. They had no business winning 84 games last season with that roster. But the rotation, you're relying a lot on Masahiro Tanaka, and he's been really good for you. You make the playoffs, I think he can win you a game. If, if it's in the wild card, I think he can win that must-win matchup. I think he's that good. Michael Pineda, not ideal for a two-starter, really. However, you can live with it at the current state of the Yankees, but yeah, the sum's got to be figured out there quickly. So, Sabathia, so old, so old, and, and paid a lot. Can he stay healthy? I mean, he had 180 innings last year, sub-4 ERA. Kind of impressive, to be honest, with Sabathia. You can't really say much else other than, wow, good job, CeCe. For where you were at in your career, that's impressive, and I commend you, sir. Well, other than that, Luis Severino, he's a nice young piece. I think he's going to take a step forward. That's a guy I'm excited to watch this season. I think he's going to take a step forward to the Yankees. He's going to be pretty solid. Other than that, a bunch of guys. And that also goes to how their bullpen is put out, put together as well. A bunch of guys. Who is going to be emerging in June and July as the mainstay starting lineups for the New York Yankees? You tell me, Yankees fans. Tell me. If I'm off base right now, tell me. Call me an idiot. That's cool. But I'm excited to see what Clint Frazier does in the major leagues. He can play any outfield position, corner, center, and Glaber Torres. Glaber Torres may be a year away 
Maybe we see him at some point late in 2017, maybe in August or something. Or maybe he just forces his way onto the big, big league roster in like the end of June or in the middle of July. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. You never know. That's why the baseball season is so fun to watch and, and pay attention to. I know it's long, but it's just unlike any other sport, and I love it. I absolutely love it. That's why I'm talking baseball with you guys. Yankees fans, let me know down below what you think and what your expectations are going into 2017 and how I did. Was I right? Was I wrong? Was I stupid? Was I stupid? Whatever. Thanks, guys, for listening. I'm going to transition now to another Major League topic. So if you're on blogtalkradio.com, stay tuned and talk Mariners next. If you're on YouTube, drop a like down below. really helps out the channel. Thank you guys for listening. You're the best. Thank you guys for sticking around for this segment of Behind the Pen. If you want more Most Valuable Podcast content, click on the video up above because I don't know why you wouldn't want to keep listening to our voices every day. But again, guys, thank you all for listening. We really do appreciate you.